We got readies in chat. Right. We have readies from all four. I, I see think ready I counted from... four readies. Yeah. Is Bad Boy said ready? Can't find his name. All right, Bad Boy is ready. So all four players are ready. Let's go ahead and Let's count go. them down. Three, two, one. Tetris. Tetris. And off we go. Up top we have Anna and Pete. Down at the bottom we have Bad Boy and Sal Volk. Anna D being the uh, attentive student that she is was the first to start properly. Nice work there. Got Metal Beast on the right. Actual name Pete. Yeah, no, you know, everyone probably knows the story, but you know, Anna, she got a lot of traction because whenever she qualified, she did predominantly left well and managed to get, you know, Dang. a high 800 in doing so. And doing that just left well, it's impressive for one. It's It was a nice a nice throwback to Dana back in the Ecstasy of Order, who was a one-way flipper when we first met uh, Dana. And uh, the, the unconventional play is just so much fun. It, it just shows you how many people play this game, but don't pay attention to the scene and, and all of the proper ways of playing. I say that with air quotes. If she can get a max out with a left well play, she's freaking good, and she will only get better the more she plays. Yes, yes. But all I four of our like players you know. here, I believe, are max out players. Well, I know Anna's not a max out player just yet, but um, I know Pete is for sure. I know Bad Boy is. I feel like, you know, just playing in some competitive can, like, help just boost your overall Tetris skill. And so definitely, you know, by mm -hmm. integrating in the scene, she is going to improve. You know, this is, you know, her being her being this good, you know, with Leftwell with limited interaction with the community. Imagine as she starts, you know, interacting with the community a lot more. And, ooh, slight ooh, mis-shift. Miss, misses the tuck there. She's going to get the Tetris to clean up. That's going to be a heck. She's going to need, like, three or four line pieces to clean up that gap on the right. As she burns that little lip there. And then she gets two in a row. That's some good RNG. It's going to let Pete catch up here. He's currently down 70,000 points. Nice flat burn. She gets the piece all the way over to the left. But she didn't rotate the long bar. And Anna's going to top out at 152. Right, so Pete needs to get to 153. It's Tetris ready. So we'll pay attention to the bottom here. Bad Boy's got a 60,000 point lead. Yeah, of course, everyone knows Bad Boy. You know, he made it to top four last year and had an absolutely fantastic showing. Just had, unfortunately, ran into Corian. Nice line spin by Bad Boy. Just one yeah. like, very creative way to say that. Square piece coming. He didn't have to do that. He's like, you know what? Watch this, folks. Probably had a little uh, more inappropriate word there, but got to keep it PG. Pete's nearly uh, a few thousand points away in his chase down. Needs 153. This double should do it. And he's good. He's By good. a couple hundred. I'll take another single. Yep. He's good to top out. So now at the bottom, Pat Foy's ahead 70,000 points, looking very clean. Yeah, 226 Salvoc for Pat Foy, 155 for Sal Volk. Sal Volk. Get the long O there. He's got a column nine well there. And he's been dancing around it. He's been wanting to transfer that well, so that's why he's burning at the moment. Always smart play in the long run, but he's just going to fall further and further behind until he can get that well transferred over and start scoring again. He got it transferred over. Now he's got a double wide well. We have a ready for we'll started and Pete. We can get them started. Excellent. But yeah, Baffoy just showing some incredible consistency to start off with. 281 at 80 lines. You know, that's a really solid 500k transition. So I'm not going to play row two. You got to at least get one Tetris with this build. He's going to take it. He's going to play it safe and get the triple to burn it down. Still pretty far from transition. It might have been a little early. He's down about 70,000 points. Pretty Tetris ready. Yep, 
he's going to have to continue to play one off the bottom for a little while. And Bad Boy's just going to continue building on this lead. Touch up for Bad Boy, 350 to three to 262, nearing transition. All right, counting down the top, ready for their game two in three, two, one, Tetris. Bad Boy has like no emotion at the moment. He he is very determined, I believe. He is the Svavar of uh, the Silver Bracket. <laughs> He just needs his uh, posse behind him like Svavar had this year. Yeah, but it's an incredibly solid game yeah. for Bad Boy. And Savo, not too far behind, down by 100,000. That could be made up in the post-transition. If Bad Boy's going to transition, if he gets these last couple Tetrises, over 500,000. So that's max out pace. Yeah, Anna actually was some trouble Anna started here. up Hanging the L. The tuck underneath it. They're gonna have to get some creative burns here. They're gonna have to get the right pieces to burn us down. And she gets the square followed by the Z. Just needs a long bar. Be a best case yeah. scenario. And Pete's gonna take the forty thousand point lead early here. Twenty, uh, yeah, twenty lines in. Bad boys transitioned at four seventy nine. So he probably let off the gas a little bit, but he's clean and he's gonna continue. Salvo is down 130,000 in transition. So he's got a lot to make up here. Yeah, of course, you know, oh, Bad Boy, very strong player. He has a 1.1 PB, so he definitely can play some killer 19. So it's going to be up to Salvo to here to, you know, rise to the occasion and pull off and, and better level 19 than uh, Bad Boy. Up top, Anna has cleaned up, got the left well, Anna Tetris. She is down 50,000 points, 35 lines in. Salvo mistucked that T piece. I don't know if that was a Tetris or not, but he's got some cleanup work now to do. That boy's in a little bit of trouble. Left side's Very down low enough though. to where, yeah, he should be able to get pieces over and, ooh, efficient cleanup. Yeah. Anna actually ran into oh. a dicey situation. Now she needs a long bar. It's going to need a couple more pieces to fix this up. She managed to get that long piece over to the left. I mean, that's what you get to do at 18. And Savo's topped out at 444. So Bat Foy can top out. He's taking game one. Bat Foy is And it's looking good. great. Gets another Tetris. Tetris ready again. She's down 60,000 points. She's going to need a long... She gets it right when she needs it. Plays it aggressive. She was one piece away from a Tetris and decided to spam her long piece to the right. That's so weird, spamming right. But hey, <laughs> what it I works mean, for. That's what we all do. We all spam right <laughs> to get the Tetris. She spams right to get the stack built up. 176 for Anna, 210 for Pete. Anna actually ahead in line, so Pete could have a bigger lead here. We have a ready from Tetris Batfoy and Savolk. We can uh, get their second game underway. If you mirrored Anna's game board like you mirror the camera angles, like nobody could tell that she's playing so unconventionally. That's what's <laughs> it's, it's it's so good because there are a lot of pieces that you can't rotate on the left side that like you can rotate on the right. It's not it's it, plus the toughest move in the game for even tappers or DAS players is getting a long piece to the left. It requires the most taps, and when you flip a long piece on its end, it's pointing down the most, so it's the easiest to hang up on any build. That is, that is the conventional reason why you don't play on that side. But she's in the lead right now with her belay. And she's going to get another Tetris to take Fantastic a one Tetris dig. lead. Nice. Aggressive digging there by Anna. Pete's looking clean, though. He's going to get a Tetris to take the lead right back. He's only up a half Tetris. Good back and forth match. Anna's going to play three rows high. She's Tetris ready up there. All right, Batfoy and Salvok are ready. Let's go ahead and count them down. Three, two, one, Tetris. Oh, the square burst is not friendly to Anna. Okay. She's in a danger zone. She needs to get the J over. She does. She does it. Wow, great, fantastic. Literally, Literally all the pieces just wow. fell into their place. And the finishes off with a Tetris. Now, she's gonna get it. 
and has got that uncomfortable right well Tetris. <laughs> Pete like... has a 30,000 point lead at 100 lines. And Anna's ahead by about a full 10 lines here. Yeah, she's been so stacking playing up that high as uh, cycled, yeah, cycled the pieces through a little faster. Now she's sticking with she's right she wants to be. Ooh, couple miss drops. Still open, waiting for that piece. She's getting bad time for a drought. Gets it. All right, now we're gonna see some level point. nineteen play from her very shortly. Yeah, we're gonna have to get that stack down a bit. That's a little uncomfortable for DAS players. Pete's keeping it nice and low. 13 lines of transition. 413 for Pete. 343 for Anna. Down at the bottom early on. Bad Boy's ahead by a Tetris. 81,000 to 54,000. And she transitioned roughly around 340. She's doing a good job oh. trying to dig this out. Just oh, needs a couple more. Oh, no! The Ooh. early dash shift. She can still survive this if the long bar comes Either right line. now. Plays it with an L. He still needs a line. That's going to do it. 351 for Anna. And Pete, Metal Beast, is going to advance the round two. But fantastic game by Anna. Played well. Shows some incredible survival as well as amazing left well play. You know, very unconventional. And to see a player play, you know, left well and be that skillful with it, it's always, you know, a pleasure. And Salvok is Anna. also topped out. Wow. That boy, did I get a? Do we get a score at Salvo? Salvo topped out at fifty-eight thousand. Okay, okay. I just so Bat Boy <laughs> is good. Bat Boy can top out, and we have the mustache advances. And wow, Bat both Boy games advances. concluded roughly around the same time. And chat still loves Uncle Mike, and loves Anna, and we hope to see them in real life. We hope to see everybody in real life next year. That's the one positive thing about this pandemic we went online this year we got a lot more participants so that everybody has a taste in their mouth of ctwc maybe we'll get more players to show up in portland next year so who do we have next i think we have a two player scene then we're going to take a brief 10 minute break to you know get water and stuff excellent so our two player scene we have sqr be... and jazzy Nice. Both so who's ours, gonna be both are uh, CTWC 2019 veterans? Well, SQR is a CTWC so, veteran. Period. He's been to numerous. Yes. So it's a uh, it's battle of Europe versus Japan. So who's got the more uncomfortable time zone here? It's got to be about what 2 a.m. in Japan right now. 4 a.m. in Japan right now. My goodness, that's. So he, he's staying up late for this one. All right, let's go ahead and count them down. Three, two, one. Tetris. You got the sign already. And we got close to game starts here as well. <clears throat> Given a note to remind players to never reset because then we can't keep their scores, so. Yeah. As soon as you top out, keep uh, the blue screen on for us, please. Thank you. But, you know, this is pretty, this has been an, a really global tournament. We have, you know, so far, I'm pretty sure we've seen players from, what, six different countries here in the first half of the silver? In the first half of silver, I mean, when we called it the, the, the Classic Tetris World Championship, it was a little bit of a joke. But it was sort of the Kevin Costner strategy of if you build it, they will come. And we got players from Japan. We got players from Europe. They're from all over now over the years. And it's been tremendous to see this this game that was really only... Japan didn't get this version of Tetris. They, they, if you ever play Famicom Tetris, it's awful. It's nothing like this version. You have to press up the rotator, some janky controls like that. And uh, getting the Tetris masters like Corian and Green Tea and SQR to adapted this style when there's no nostalgia at all for it it's it's, it's been quite a uh, journey for them yeah and actually i'll just start here we're off really close sqr in the lead mm -hmm. by one tetris jazzy down 79 to 100,000. so really good play here at the beginning that's what you like to see you know 
and it's kind of like some mental thing for some players it's like those first few lines it's like okay i did good i should be able to you know continue doing good the rest whereas you know some that games where like you might not be able to have a good first 20 lines you're like okay i'm not quite sure how well i'm going to be doing this game i mean this i mean i know they're playing at home and their home tv with their home console but being online like this makes it a different experience still and knowing that you can do the same thing in a tournament situation that you can do when you're playing regular it, it takes a minute for your mind to adjust to that and and getting those early scores uh, is really essential in a tournament like this or any any tournament or any walk of life it's not just tetris sqr's got a little bit of dig now yeah both of these players are in fact daz players and sqr plays on a dog bone which you know that's yeah, an odd that's an oddity to see I like to have a dog they didn't bone have the, the dog bones are more common in Japan because the, the Famicom the original had the attached controllers so if they're playing on a uh, NES deck they either have a top loader which only had the dog like they didn't have a standalone Famicom controller so those are more common over there um, yeah, two, Jazzy's closest gap yeah 207 for SQR 185 for Jazzy SQR Still trying to, you know, deal with this situation. Hasn't really got the pieces that he's been looking for. Yeah, he's waiting for that line or that L to fill in that left side. Ooh, nice flat burn. Oh, no, the misdrop. Ooh! Good pole balls, gonna, but he get... yeah, he hangs the T. Oh. Top flat at 211. Jazzy has already surpassed the score. So we're going to go ahead and give Jazzy his first heart. Chris Tang with the... Yep, the, the AV Famicom had the dog bone controller, and that AV Famicom was like similar to the uh, the top loading NES, which is pretty rare over here, which is what came with a dog bone. They have short cords too. In Japan, they have short controller cords for some reason. So I wonder if he's using an extension or if his console's right up against him. But real stupid nerd stuff <laughs> to talk about between games. All right, SQR is ready for game two. We just need a ready for Jazzy, and there's his heart. Jazzy is also ready. Let's go ahead and count them down. In three, two, one, Tetris. Had a shout out to Tetris block pillows behind Jazzy. Anytime anybody dresses up their room for our tournament, we appreciate it. I don't have any Tetris stuff yet, except for uh, the little lamp that they gave for uh, the top twenty or top twenty-four qualifying. Stick around long enough, you'll be swimming in it. Yeah, is that, this this is actually is that QR's a, monitor. Yeah, it's right there, I, I believe. It's, is that it's like it's like a, like a like a little five-inch monitor? Wow. Yeah. Online fact about SQR and Jazzy, they both met two times previously with SQR coming on top 2-0. And their most recent encounter was CTM Masters in October 2018, where SQR also won 2-0. Oh, so Jazzy's already got a little bit of uh, revenge here, taking the first game. Yeah, well acquainted with each other. You like to see, you know, some of these rivalries develop. Hmm. A little indecision from SQR there. Not quite sure how to burn this down. Ooh, but very nice. He's ahead by 5,000 points, so if he can clean this up, you got three lines to get to the bottom. Jazzy's in scoring position. He's going to take the lead with this Tetris. So, and looks like SQR is going for the column eight. Column eight, zoom meeting Tetris. He's holding out for the long bar. He's actually running into a sizable yeah. drought there, but he does knock it down, and he's just going to decide to burn out of it. Definitely, yep. I know the more aggressive move there would, you know, keep on building until you could, uh, you know, get into a position where you only have to burn one or two lines because, you know, a triple, triple always hurts to take, especially in the later levels where triple, you get a triple, your opponent gets a Tetris. you just gone down like 20 or 30,000 more points. Exactly, but it was, it's so early... And the way these matches have gone, surviving to level 29 and scoring later is more important than squeezing out one Tetris and ruining your stack early on. Yeah. But 
really close game. SQR and Jazzy, 144 for SQR, 140 for Jazzy. Both at identical line counts. Now SQR. Jazzy's got the got the uh, specks of dust to deal with. And nice burns by SQR. Did have a long bar dependency and creates another one. Could he actually go for an elevated yeah. left wall here? Elevated and a well Tetris. I like it. And it's ready to transfer if you get the line piece. And he does. And he gets it. Nicely done. Seeing that transfer several pieces ahead. And nice flat burn and by nice... SQR. Seeing the, seeing the Smash Boy coming. There's your Smash Boy count, folks. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I know I know Sharky's not a Smash Boy fan. No, I am not. <laughs> SQR has got a sizable gap, but he's Tetris ready. So with that Tetris, he's gonna have a sixty thousand point league while he's in burn mode. Or he might elect to build a Tetris one off the bottom. It doesn't look like he's gonna do that. These aren't exactly suffer games, but these aren't super clean games either. It's kind of in that weird in between here. Yeah, just players are eking out Tetris, then clean, then Tetris, then clean. Just been like rough time dealing with uh, some pieces that their stack is not accommodating for, and it results in uh, some tricky situations where sacrificing the stack is like the best option in order to you know stay alive. This is tournament Tetris though. Like if you're playing at home and you're going for high score, you're you're wanting to press reset right now and just start fresh because well, what a garbage game so far, but. Both players have to work their way through it, and this is why you don't reset. So when you get into these situations, you can handle them in a tournament Ooh, situation. Very nice burn wow. by SQR. Good piece recognition right there. And he's set up yeah, for a center or Tetris. His inner Quaid is coming out this game, and Jazzy's clean and ready for a Tetris to close this gap. Getting droughted. Yeah, SQR really taking Besides, advantage now up by 100,000 points. And... Jazzy is just going to have to, you know, chase him down in the post-transition, which we saw that happen today with Citric Ice and Mealchuck. That was an absolutely outstanding chase down. It was, it was an odd chase down because it was live chase down. You normally see the chase down after a top out, but to see that happen in game is really rare. Yeah. SQR now with 110,000 point lead, nearing transition. Well, players at identical line counts as well, so there is no, you know, oh, they're ahead in line, so the other player can score more line, you know, more points. This and there just... was that situation. Jazzy took the triple with his line rather than build up for a Tetris. It's that aggression reward system that every great video game has. Oh, misses the tuck. So he's going to have another triple here with a line piece. Yeah, he needs to aim to clean this out sooner than later. Transition is looming. And SQR has just been so clean the past 40 lines. There's another Tetris for SQR. It goes up to 379. Jazzy at 248. Jazzy gonna... Oh, with that, with that square, he could have set up for a dirty Tetris. Decided not to. Yeah, six lines left, so... He should Get be able down. to clean this out. It's a good TP, followed by a long bar. Go ahead and burn yeah. that. Transition for both players. 408 for SQR three or 256 for Jazzy. Yeah, that's a significant lead for SQR right now. So Jazzy's gonna have to have a heck of a run to catch up. It can't happen. Yeah, SQR is gonna have to do some burning here though. Didn't necessarily get favorable pieces, a lot of jagged pieces here and getting the yeah. lead, getting jagged piece burst, whether it SZ or T, is not what you want on, you know, level 19 if your board's not accommodating nice. for it. Nice, nice burns by Jazzy. If he can get this down, he's got an open window to catch up here. Still a lot of runway before level 29. Ooh, SQR going for the aggressive placement. Gets the long bar, though. And it looks like Jazzy SQR is going to clean out before Jazzy. So if Jazzy didn't have a game to give, this would be a point where he could just turn on all the aggression. But I guess maybe with the game in his pocket, he's going to elect to keep it down in that bottom five row game to get back to the bottom and he does Ooh, slight mistrust and rebuild SQR. his stack as qr yeah he's just gonna burn this down. gets gets the double line yeah so right now it's, it's just a game of survival both of these players just trying to survive their best S sqr is up significantly he's, he's up 160,000 points 
He's looking for a long bar here. Oh, nice burn. If he gets the long Jazz, bar, that's a Jazz perfect the trouble. Jazzy's halfway up. It's all RNG and skill at this point. And he's yeah. going to top out at 290. SQR yeah. And SQR was right up. on the cusp of topping out as well. Just got droughted. So SQR is going to take that game. And once again, we have another decider. We saw how the last decider went. So could that be a foreshadowing yeah. of what happens in this decider? Bring it on. Let's go. You guys have to rely on the power of the beret to help him advance. No player has a glasses advantage. Right, so yeah, when we have a ready from both, we can get started. All right, SQR is ready. And Jesse is also ready. Let's go ahead and count them down. Three, two, one, Tetris. CTWC shirt advantage as well, yes. Although, uh, SQL wearing the Centaur pinball shirt. Centaur is a awesome early 80s Williams pinball machine. SQR is a very big pinball player and they didn't get a ton of pinball machines in Japan. The scene is burgeoning over there, and he's one of the better players over there. Yeah, but to start the game off, both players have knocked down the Tetris. Jazzy having to do some burning here. SQR off a couple of dependencies, nothing too dangerous. But... Will we see them play a little bit more conservative? Because remember, this is a decider. There are no more games left yeah. to give. You top out early, that's almost, that's like 99% chance your opponent wins. Ooh, was that a misflip by Jazzy, or did he mean to do that? Not sure. I gotta think sure. that's a misflip. It's gonna help him He's playing it well. Out. Yeah. He's taking a bunch of smart placements, trying to give him, you know, the best chance for an efficient dig out. But SQR's got a wide open gate here to increase this lead even more. He's currently ahead 35,000. Now he's Tetris. at 60,000. Yeah. A lot of players aren't making Jet. too many adjustments either. Seems like they're, you know, just going set in their moves. And Jazzy's dirty Tetris ready if you can get it. And he does. There dirty Tetris for Jazzy. Nice. One more burn and he's back to scoring position. Down 60,000 points early. There it is. Yeah, but fantastic job on SQR just being able to capitalize on, you know, that moment. I feel like, you know, one of the more important moments that, you know, is like, hey, I need to score Tetris's right here is when your opponent gets in the dig, you're like, all right, my opponent's in a dig. This is a chance for me to either catch up or grow my lead. And SQR just stacking cleanly, you know, trying to trying his best to avoid mistakes and making smart decisions allowed him to, you know, build up the lead that he has right now. Yeah, he's going to do that Ooh, very fun nice. split burn. Those are always fun. Tetris ready again, both players. Of course, just as I say that, SQR covers the well. Reopens it, but knocks down a Tetris. So still almost up Perfect by 100,000. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly where you want to be up against your opponent in the decider. You want to make it as hard for them as possible. Because it's not just, you know, putting, you know, the technical pressure. It's like, ha, I'm up 100,000 points. You're also putting the mental pressure. It's like, uh-oh, I'm up 100,000 points. You better do something. You got to play more aggressive, start scoring more Tetrises. And, you know, that pressure can do something to a player. It's, it's a different mindset. When you're playing at home by yourself, you're not playing against anybody but yourself or your PB. And you can always just relax and reset your game whenever. When it's a must score or die situation the mental game you bring to this changes and that, that's for everybody even jd has that that's that's how joe's that's how jonas won seven championships was he was the best at that for so long yeah 255 and SQR. for sqr and 197 for jazzy so sqr still maintaining just under a hundred thousand point lead just really great place for both but, you know, give credit where it's due. Jazzy, that means that Jazzy has been able to keep up with SQR's Tetris rate, scoring a Tetris each time, you know, SQR does. It's down to 80,000, so that's four Tetrises. That's not outside of the possibility of a comeback. We've already seen it once today. We saw it once before transition today. So, QR's playing as perfectly as you can ever hope for. 
Jazzy's clean, waiting to get Tetris ready here. SQR actually running into a drought mm. here. Oh no! SQR oh, is gonna hang happen. it. It's gonna top out at 305. Jazzy needs to get to 306. Just what we were talking about. The game could just turn on a dime just like that. Jazzy has a clean board. He needs a two Tetrises. We'll take it. He's he's played it safe. Took a couple burns. Now I can just line it out if he like. He's 306. Now he just needs a, a triple will do it. Wait, it looks like he's going to try and do, and do it style. in style. Uh-oh. The game might be punished. There it is. You. <laughs> there it is. Jazzy takes the game. Chatter. Winning the decider up against SQR. SQR, fantastic job. You know, unfortunate for it to happen, but you did well. Congrats on, you know, qualifying for this tournament was even a big deal. Okay. Well, while we wait for Scamper to figure that out, we'll go ahead and start down at the bottom for uh, Oof and Timmy. So, Timmy and Oof, this is a countdown for you guys. Three, two, one, Tetris. Look at Timmy getting into it, getting the music turned up. Love it. Yeah, while we wait on a uh, Scamper to try and fix webcam. Uh, player view, or we'll just stick with four. Uh, we'll, we'll go two player for now. Oh, don't adjust everything again. Okay. Off we go. Yeah, so oof, another player that was, uh, he's a 1.1 player, if I'm not mistaken, and Timmy is a high 900k player, so. We can expect to see some, you know, interesting matches from them. Timmy also played in a couple of uh, the test exhibitions that I had and won majority of his games as well. Mm. Nice uh, Z spin there. Awesome if Timmy got his first max out live in the CTWC silver bracket. See what happens. Yeah, who knows? I mean, people, we have a lot of surprising stories like uh, Sidnev who got his first max out in uh, the gold bracket. And then, according to what I was told, he just ended his call right there. He didn't want, you know, a higher kick or anything. Just oh, ended. Because, I mean, sweet. I, just getting that massive jump in PB, over. that's, like, amazing. But to start off, both these players playing incredibly clean. Oof with a couple of uh, issues. 98,000 for Oof. 97. Oh, 98,000 for oof, Timmy as oof well. Oof's going to go for the column nine. Are the piece is going to get, is he going to get the line bar? Is he going to have to knock this down? He's going to knock it down. So that was the appropriate time because he's still droughted. This is probably a good 20 piece drought at this point. And if you get a 25 piece drought, that is a hundred blocks. That is half your board. So you got to burn down at some point or top out. And Timmy's in trouble too. Yeah, both of these Battle players. Battle of the tougher games here. They're both, sir, they're both uh, doing fantastic survival. Oof is clean. Mm hmm. Timmy is on his way getting there. And just getting a bunch of rough pieces. Ironically, he needs jagged pieces, and RNG is not giving it to him. <laughs> this game. Like, neither player blew in their cartridges properly before putting him in this morning. That's science that, that Vanessa's with the RNG to blow in your cart before you insert it in the system. Uh, Timmy's going to use his line piece to get a double to burn us down. Got three more solves to go. Ooh, interesting solve, interesting solve right there. Definitely could have chosen many ways to go for that. And gets that over. It looked like he might have lost Daz because I saw some, you know, tapping. Oof gets the Tetris finally. He's got a 70,000 point lead at this point, although we lost Tim's stream. We're back again on Tim's side. Oof is clean and ready to score. All right, Timmy appears to... Okay, he's back. 216 for Oof, 131 for Timmy. Finally clean. Now does he get the long bar for the reward? No. I know the answer to that before he even asks the question. 
Look at us. No, he, he does. Trial. He does get it eventually. <laughs> wow. And he, he one block away gets the reward finally. One seventy nine. Tim two forty three. Oof. Yeah, roughly man. eighty lines for both players. G roughly the uh, same pace. I'm gonna go for a column slightly eight. dirty column eight. He's Knocks gonna it get down. it. But he's building on top of it. Looks like he's. Oh no, nah, he's not gonna go aggressive. Yeah. You can even see it with the head shake. You, you could you could see the gears turning his mind. What is he gonna go for? It was he not? And he's like, no, it's. Just wanna. Plus, somebody's going downstairs behind him. <laughs> you gotta love the family cameos. <laughs> but uh Tim, tim's like completely ignoring it oh he's going aggressive and it pays like off wow you could just see that massive exhale i mean i would have yeah. done the same thing except for i probably wouldn't go as aggressive there but... he, he's down a hundred thousand points why not i mean what what if you top out when you're down that much what i mean it's no sense in not taking the risk and that wasn't uber risky the biggest problem is just you have to you maintain your stack at that point, but he still needs that one solve to get clean again for a Tetris. And there it is. Still, still waiting. Perfect Finally pieces. gets it. Boom. Down one hundred thousand points. Yeah, three, during transition. Yeah, three seventy for Oof. Timmy at two sixty nine. And interestingly enough, Timmy has like ten more long bars than Oof. Oof has just been utilizing his long bars very well. Average game all the way to 29, you get about 80 long bars. So if you get more than that, then you know you got to line to the most game and you really got to take advantage of it. Yeah, but he's just going to have to play conservative here, try and burn this yeah. out. Transition is needed. Oh, Oof by... covers, misses the tuck, covers the well before the Tetris. But slides that S right underneath. But this is Timmy's opportunity to close the gap maybe by a couple, like a Tetris or two. I just had an approval. It's Tetris ready with a single burn. And ooh, there's a rough transition, rough time for that square. But he knocks down Tetris anyway, transition mm, okay. at roughly like 302. Oof transitions at 433. Timmy has a game ahead of him, but anything can happen in this game, Tetris. It's gonna go for the column six well here. And ooh, he needs to get something over to the left. Yeah. He gets this. And the he, can, he got it. T piece hidden these he, quick he did a little He did a little hyper jolt there. It's a little, little body English. I wonder where he got that from. Yeah, it must have been a really good player. Seems to be working out well for him so far. He opens up the center well. Does a flat Ooh, delay burn. No, he, did, he didn't flip it. Oof is going for a one row up Tetris and gets it. 498 at 155 line. Man, what a drop Timmy for Timmy right now. That long piece. He gets it, but now he's got major league clean to do. Not sure how much he can do. That is a nine high left, and yeah, he's going to top out yeah. 372. Oof is good for game one. And that's what happens when you go aggressive with those strange, non-conventional builds at level 19 speeds. If the pieces don't agree with you, your game is over in an instant. We're going to check in on uh, Scamper and Oof, or Scamper and Peter, and it looks like they're good, so we can have uh, the scene. Scamper, look at this arm over the, the side of the ch this couch there in the jacket. It's so relaxed. Like a Playboy Harry Potter. <laughs> All right, we have a ready from Scamper. We are ready from... Oof, Peter, and Timmy. Or Timmy has already said ready, so we, we just need it ready from Oof and Peter. Munis is ready. And Oof is ready. Let's go ahead and count all four players down in three, two, one, Tetris. Game one up top, game two at the bottom. Oof has the one game lead. And they all start pretty pretty close to each other, not simultaneous. If we can get a four-way simultaneous start, that'll be the pinnacle of classic Tetris restreaming. Yeah, you, you would have been the restreamer of the year if you managed to do that. 
Yeah, starting off, you know, Timmy is the first out the bunch to knock down their first Tetris. Munis follows. Peter with a two wide well. We'll see how he fills in that gap or if he's going to. And he has to do it with a Z, so that's going to mess up his build there. Yeah. Not a game over situation, but that's going to be about a 10 line solve at least, unless he builds another Tetris on top of this. And it doesn't look like he is. He's going to burn it down, which is smart early on. Online fact about Peter and Scamper, they have met previously three times with Peter leading their encounters two to one. Their most recent encounter was in the classic Tetris League of October in 2020, where Peter won the playoffs four to zero. So mm. Scamper is definitely coming into this tournament with vengeance here. Looks awfully cool with vengeance on his mind. That's a good approach. Gonna get the Tetris here with a L stood up. No, he's not going to do it. He's going to just fill in the gap with a Z and burn it down. Interesting the bottom, spin Timmy. Yeah. As I say, Timmy's down by 10,000 points. 20,000 now. I need to panic still early. And he's not going to... He's avoid. He's holding out for that TP. He could have solved it with a couple of uh, line spin. Mm, that line spamming to the left. Yeah, now he needs to just burn this stack down. And it's sets up give. another line spin dependency, hits the line spin, and gets nice. a line for the left. Good Very solve. Well done. Good solve for Timmy. 107. Oof has been... Yeah. 107 for Timmy. 129 for Oof. Up top, 151 for Peter. 115 for Scamper. Oof is about in that yellow danger zone. Not going to get a game over, but isn't in a scoring position right now. And in a virtual tie game, Timmy can really open up this lead if he can get the pieces. Singing along, yeah. Jams are help. Man, you get you get that good song, then you definitely you know can definitely help your performance. You know, having the right mental state coming into Ooh. any competition period definitely can help out. Oof. Oof's Z tower in the middle is a major major issue. Yeah, it's a massive. There is aspire. no there is no good way to burn that down. And Timmy has not only taken, he but surpassed it. him in score. So 204 for Timmy, 148 for Oof. He's clean now. Up top, Munis, or I mean Peter, doing a fantastic <laughs> job here. 232 and Scamper at 192, down by two Tetrises. Good game up top. Not the bottom. Oof's got the game in his pocket. It's down... 30, 40,000 points at the clean board. Halfway to transition. No major adjustments he needs to make. Just play it out. You never know what'll happen after transition. And we almost had the exact the story same of score at the top. Today. I had to like point that out real nice. quick before uh, Moon is, or Peter Tetris. But there was the exact same Peter. score. Had to ruin our moment for us. Well, are they separated by a single? <laughs> They're actually separated by a single. And actually, all players all around have pretty close scores, and they're all at roughly at the same line count. No one's, you know, pushing down. 332 for Peter, 311 for Scamper, 267 for Oof, and 346 for Timmy. Don't want a commentator's curse, but will all four games go past transition? Let's see if we can get that to happen. As you say, that scamper is up really high. He should yeah, be able to burn yeah. this down. Nothing too dangerous, but decides not to adjust for that Z. He's covering up as well with even more trash, so it's going to make it even a longer clean time. If he gets a J here, he's open. Gets an eye. He's ready for a touch. Almost didn't rotate it there. Mm -hmm. He's playing a bit too aggressive. Give me a oh, no, and that's oh, going to be no, it. Oh, he's going to get a whip. He's too late. Peter takes game one. At the bottom, Timmy is up 55,000 points, but he is playing in a yellow zone. Right, right as soon as you say that, he burns that out with extreme finesse and... Yeah. Flexes it with a Tetris. 4.30 for Timmy. So, so that's how the commentator's curse works. Say that they're in a bad situation, then they'll get out of it. So that's what I'll try to do from now on. 
Never bring up the good stuff. Only bring up the bad stuff. Mr. Negativity, here we go. Munis and Peter. Oh my gosh. Peter and Scamper are ready. Let's go ahead and count them down. Three, two, one. We're about to reach transition again for Timmy and Oof. Oof is actually caught back up. Yeah. He's only down by two Tetrises. And this is a high stack for Timmy. He's going to transition 461. Very, very smart for Timmy. Yeah, just go ahead and keep it safe. Oof transition at 420. You got a hundred lines to work with. Don't fight for that one Tetris. You get a game over in a knockout situation. Yeah. Oof knocks down a Tetris is one step closer to uh, tying the score. Timmy having to go for a bunch of safety triples, but that hang. He mm. needs the long bar here. He's getting droughted bad. And that left is dangerous. Yeah. He can't get the get long over. bar over. Oh, he can't get it over. Yep. He has a that was a seven high. And Oof at 480 is going to take it and advances. GG's Timmy and Oof. It's best two of three, man. They're over in an instant. Yeah. But now that that game has been resolved, let's go ahead and check out our game with Peter and Scamper. Let's go ahead and flip him real quick. Flip your hearts on this one, too. Yeah. We got two good boards. We got a neck and neck game. Only a thousand points separating the two players right now. Yeah, that was a strong game Peter had in the first game. You know, it was looking like a mid 500k transition, which, you know, ideally you want a mid 500 to go for like a max out. And Peter hasn't maxed out yet. So if his opponent allows, maybe we might be able to see him get his first max here. Scamper's down 40,000 points, 40 lines in. Out of one and a half, two Tetrises. Both boards looking good. Scamper's got a, wow. a couple of dependencies of LJs. That was a lot of squares. But mm. he's just able to just throw them over to the left, so they're not too much of an issue. But he needs to start scoring. As remember what happened last game, Peter just continuously yep. kept pushing the score, not really finding himself into too many digs, and you know, end up getting like a pretty sizable lead above Scamper. Scamper hasn't run into any like horrific situations yet, so just keep playing this game, keep it low, keep scoring when you can, and he'll be fine. And Tetris for Scamper, he's now down 10,000 points. 211 for Scamper, 229 Peter. for Peter. Peter with a four line solve here. If he can get the line piece, he does. Now he'll need another one. He's got to cover up again. That's in time. Nicely done. 234. See the Tetris side right now. He's. Ooh, he decides not to get Tetris ready with the long bar. And now has some parity oh. issues. Did get a T piece, so it's going to help a little bit. Yeah, Scamper's now in clean mode with two pieces of cheese to deal with. He's down 20,000 points at 77 lines. Yeah, so a little bit over halfway to transition. Both of these players, of course, capable. In fact, they're actually really identical in PB. Pretty sure they both have, you know, just a couple thousand points off of a max. So... That being said, we know that they're capable of some good games post transition. And you know, when it when you transition close like this, it really just comes down to who has yep. the better post. Post transition is all what this game is about right now. When this does take a two Tetris lead, 317 to 272. Scamper's ready, knocks down a Tetris, 295. If, if these players are stressed out, their faces don't show it. They're both very stone cold face right now. Maybe that is the strategy. Just so you know, show no emotion. It's either show a lot of emotion or show no emotion. The in between might be, you know, what could cause you to falter. Yeah. 
I'm a let it all hang out type of guy. But my, and I'm sure you are too, but not everybody has the same makeup when it comes to these games. Some people excel the other way as well. We got a neck and neck game, folks. And it, as I say, that Peter hangs a L. And that's that's actually a major that's perfect for Scamper, too. though. That gives him opportunity to catch up. He's down by a Tetris and a half. So 20 more lines, roughly, or 15, actually, until we reach the level 19 transition, where, of course, speeds are going to get 50% faster. They're falling at, you know, two-thirds of a second, maybe faster, depending on how high your stack is. And so these players want to get their boards under control. And Scamper, he's rows. looking pristine. It's just Peter with some issues. Scamper hasn't really scored too much yet. He's only ahead 14,000 points. Does get the Tetris there, so he's up 34,000 now. One Tetris to go before transition. Peter is in a not great spot. Oh, no. Oh, he's got transition halfway up the board. This is not good. He's going to have to be very careful with his placements. Oh, now he's, he's multiple right. long bar dependent. And yeah, Scamper is going to take that game. And that means, once again, we have a decider. Transition is a game killer. Our third decider of the day. Love the deciders. And when we get readies from both players, we got it ready from Scamper. We will start. got it ready for Munis. Let's count them down to their decider in three, two, one, Tetris. A best of three is now a best of one. I just do want one King's impression today. <laughs> Unfortunately, since there are no, I guess we can do like game four minus one is no more. <laughs> <laughs> and Scamper with the troll one point. Gotta love that. Hey. One of these days, it's going to get a tie game, and that's going to come into play. One of these days. That, that'd be a sight to see. <laughs> but already, both of these players off to a fantastic start here. You know, knocking down their first Tetris and having clean stacks. Because, I mean, a lot can go wrong at the beginning. Yep. I mean, They're into the flow. That's all you can ask for. No early top outs. Make your opponent earn it. Yeah, I feel like if you can make your opponent work for for you, the wins, like, you know, you should be satisfied with that. It's like, you know, you, yeah. you gave your all, and unfortunately your opponent was just, you know, a little bit better at this time. You know, you should be proud of that. So, you know, just leave everything on the board. I was going to say court. Cause make your opponent. Yeah. yeah, you know. Play field is too... That's too nerdy. You can't say leave it on the play field. The Matrix, that, that, that's another oh, term for it. That's a good one. Uh, leave it all on the Matrix. Anyways, so early Peter, on, yeah. Peter has about a 40,000 point lead. The scamper's clean, and that's all you can ask for. Both players look like they are DAS players. Yeah, Scamper is DAS and Peter is also DAS. So uh, there was a lot, there was uh, more DAS players in this bracket than Tappers. And the, the thing about DAS is it's not just tap, it's not just holding in the D-pad. You have to be doing that before your piece shows up on the Matrix. Uh, to, in order to get that properly over to the far left or far right. So that's what makes DAS so difficult. It's not just holding it in left and right. It's You have to anticipate where you're going to do it before the piece arrives. And that's why even a lot of tappers have a trouble using that style the first time they try it. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's the... going to have a nice creative solve there. Yeah, very nice. And it's actually able to you know keep up with Munis. However, he is ahead in lines, though. So, Peter in prime position to continue this lead. 
However, it's a pretty jagged board with like one T piece to hopefully fix this up. And there it is. Commentator's blessing. <laughs> Commentator, commentator's blessing. You, the game does what Sharky d tells it to do. It's nice to have that reverse power. Scamper's looking great. Almost a perfect <laughs> secret grade <laughs> left to right <laughs> there. Yeah. He's going to get the Tetris. Got a two wide well. He's going to use a piece. He's going to get the line piece to fill that in. That's always nice. And now we are just about even. 223 yeah, to 226. Well, this is the decider we wanted. This is the decider we deserve. Scamper's going to knock down the Tetris to take the uh, 5,000 point lead. So really and... clean play. Just really haven't seen anyone having to do, you know, any real digging out right now. Yep. I'd say not quite max out pace for these two games. Probably about a 50% Tetris rate on both sides. And ooh, Scamper getting up a little bit high. Wow. Great pieces. Yes. Perfect yes, Z. Opens it up. And wow. Couldn't have asked for any better yep. pieces for that situation. He's Look, gonna take it couldn't tell. If you watch his face that whole time, you couldn't tell. He might have been, he might have, oh, he hangs up the L. If he gets the Tetris, that'll be good. All right, that's fine. He can do a double tuck right here, but he's not going for it. Yeah, he's just going to burn it all play, the way out. Play it safe. Absolutely. Play it safe. 30 lines before transition. There's no sense risking it right now. There's too much runway left to score still. Not in a game this tight. At level 28, go for it. Level 18, no. Yeah, because definitely a double good. tuck right there is possible here on these speeds on, you know, those higher level 19 speeds. It's incredibly difficult since you only have two frames before, you know, your piece locks. Mm -hmm. But both players looking at a 400 transition. Moon is looking like a higher 400 than Scamper here. Yeah, two Tetris lead for Peter, plus uh, Peter is behind in pace, 112 to 117. But Scamper's looking great, and he played it safe when he had that mistake earlier. That's all you can ask for, survive and score. Yeah, Scamper's actually been getting droughted fairly a lot this game. He's been utilizing a good number of his yeah. long bars, but Peter so is 44 definitely... 44 to 33 in the line yeah. count, yeah. Definitely Peter's had an advantage, and he's taken utilization of that, as you can see by his score. And speaking of drought, Scamper's running into another one. That's... This could be a lines of least game for Scamper. He's gonna Tetris into transition, but now he's got the one piece of dirt at the bottom. He's gonna burn it down, open it up. Moonish transitions at 430. Both players had to do some cleaning here. So Scamper's down 70,000 points post transition. So he's gonna have to start taking the risk soon. But he's got the board to do it. And Peter is in a little bit of trouble got three pieces of cheese now and halfway up the board that's not any this isn't like level 18 when you can play some miracle clean mode and this is level the decider there are no more oh, second chances yeah. both players are in trouble now oh boy who can survive Amper, who can get over to the left can he get oh, over to the left he couldn't he needs to is try and do a pole vault so peter and advances peter advances to the skin of his teeth he was about to top out as well Let's go ahead and give Peter his heart. Well deserved, well earned. But man, that was scary for both. 